3. Hello students, in this video lecture, we will discuss problem based on one-way classification in a completely randomized design. Okay, we know what is meant by one-way classification. One-way classification is nothing but we are going to discuss only one factor of interest. Okay, so let us see one example. A completely randomized design experiment with 10 different plots and three different treatments gave the following results. Okay, so we are going to analyze the results for treatment effect. Okay, so here they given 10 different plots and also they give three different treatments. Okay, so we consider the first treatment is A, second one B and third one is C. And also they give what? Yield. Yeah. Plot number one, treatment A, we get to yield is 5. Similarly, 4, 3, 7, 5, 1, 3, 4, 1. Okay. So, what is our target? We are going to analyze the results for treatment effect. Okay. How to identify the given problem satisfied? Analysis of variance 1. Means here from the given statement, we are going to analyze only the treatment effect. Therefore, the only one factor is what? Treatment effect. Therefore, it is called what? One way classification of ANOVA test. Okay. And also it is called as ANOVA 1. Uh, let us solve this problem. Solution. The given problem is one way classification because one factor is yield. Okay. What is given? Treatment. Treatment is nothing but we consider one factor is what? Yield. Okay. So here from the given statement, we have three different treatments are there. Right. So we are going to collect A treatment value separately, B treatment value separately and C treatment value separately. And also we will assign each treatment is some different notations. So here A treatment we consider X1, B treatment X2 and C, C is X3. Okay. If we add these values, you get total is what? 16 and it is called as sum, sum of X1 equal to 16. Similarly, if you add these three values, you get sum of uh, x2 equal to 15. Okay, this is nothing but sum of x3 equal to 9. Okay, once you get x1, x2, x3 value, then we take square of uh, x1, x2 and the x3. So, what is x1 square? So, you get 5 square is nothing but 25, 7 square 49, 3 square 9, 1 square 1. If you add this, these values, you get 84 and it is called sum of x1 square equal to 84. Similarly, we find x2 square and x3 square. After that, adding these values, you get sum of x2 square equal to 81 and sum of x3 square equal to 35. Okay. So, using these values, we are going to find 1 by 1. Oh, 1 by, okay. Using these values, we are going to find 1 by 1. Okay. So, what is step number one? Step number one, we will define hypothesis. One is what? Null hypothesis. Another one is alternative hypothesis. Usually, null hypothesis, we consider H0. Okay. What is our H0? H0 is there is no significant difference between the columns. So, one way classification, we are going to discuss what? Between the columns. Okay. So, what is your column treatment? That is called yield. H1, alternative hypothesis, H1. H1 is there is significant difference between the columns that is yield. Okay. What is step number two? Step number two, level of significance. Okay. So, from the from this problem, they are not mentioned uh, alpha value, level of significance value. In case they are not mentioned, we usually we consider level of significance is alpha equal to 5 percentage. That is nothing but 0 0.05. How to write this one? Percentage means divided by 100, you get 5 by 100 equal to 0 0.05. What is step number 3? Step number 3, we find a variance ratio F. If you want to find a variance ratio, we will find 1 by 1. First, we find what is mean by N. N is nothing but number, number of observation, which means from the given data, we have 10 different observations are there. Okay, in treatment A, we have 4 observations. In treatment B, we have 3 observation. Uh, in treatment C, we have three observations are there. If you add all observation, you get a total number of observation is 10. Okay. Next, we find the capital T. What is meant by capital T? Means sum of all the observations. Sum of all the observation equal to 40, which means from the data, if we add all values, if you add all values, you get 40. So already we know if you add row wise, you get this value. If you add column wise, you get this value. If you add these three, you get 40. Otherwise, if you add these, three, these four values, you get 40. This 40 is called 
sum of all the observations. Therefore, T equal to 40. Next, we find C. What is C? C is nothing but number of columns. From the year, from the given data, we have three columns is there. One is treatment A, treatment B, treatment C. So, we get three columns. Therefore, C equal to 3. Okay. Next, we find the correction factor. What is correction factor? T square by N. T value is 40. 40 square by 10. Using calculator, you get 160. Okay. Next, we find SST. What is the meaning of SST? Sum of square of total value. Okay. That is nothing but sum of XI square minus correction factor. Okay. What is sum of XI square? We have three treatments are there. So, we, we, are, we are taking sum of X1 square, sum of X2 square, sum of X3 square minus correction factor. What is sum of x1 square 84, sum of x2 square 81, sum of x3 square 35 minus correction factor value is 160. You, uh, if you simplify this, you get a 6. Okay. So next we find a uh, SSC. SSC is nothing but sum of square of columns. Okay. What is sum of square of column is sum of x1 square by n1, sum of x2 whole square by n2, sum of x3 whole square by n3 plus etc. minus correction factor. From the given problem, we have three uh, treatment is there. So, we consider three treatment value uh, and the n1, n2, n3. These, these three values are nothing but sample size in treatment A, treatment B, treatment C. From the given data, we see sum of x1 value 16. So, 16 square. How to write N1 in treatment A, sample size is 4. Okay, 4 values are there. You consider N1 value 4. Similarly, X2, N2. N2 is nothing but treatment B sample size. Okay, in treatment B, we have 3 samples, 3 values are there. So, therefore, N2 is 3. And similarly, N3 is, N3 also 3. Okay, so using calculator, you get 60. Next, we find SSE. SSE is nothing but sum of square of error. How to find sum of square of error is nothing but subtracting from total value minus call subtracting. Okay, how to find a error value means subtracting from total and column values. We know total value is 40, uh, column value is 6. 40 minus 6 equal to 34. Now we write ANOVA table. Okay, therefore the ANOVA table is we have five different categories source of variation, sum of square, degree of freedom, mean square variance ratio. First, we write between columns. Between column, sum of square is nothing but SSC. SSC value 6. Next, we find degree of freedom in between columns. C minus 1 formula. What is C? Number of columns, 3 minus 1. Similarly, we find within errors. SSE value 34. Degree of freedom is N minus C formula. N value 10. 10 minus 3 is 7. Next, we find the total. Total is SST. If you add this to, you get 40. Otherwise, already T value 40. Okay. If you add this two value, you get N minus 1. Minus C plus C are getting cancelled. You get N minus 1. N value 10. 10 minus 1 is 9. Here you see 7 plus 2, 9. Next, I am going to find a mean square value. That is MSC value. Okay. How to find MSC means? SSC by C minus 1. 6 by 2, you get 3. Okay. Similarly, we find MSE. How to find MSE? SSC by N minus C. SSC value 34. N minus C value 7. So, 34 by 7, you get 4.86. Next, we find variance ratio. F. What is formula? F equal to MSC by MSC. Otherwise, MSC by MSC, if MSC greater than MSC or MSC greater than MSC. Okay, why we consider greater than this concept is your ratio test, it should be always what? Greater than 1. You should not get less than 1 value. Here, if you consider MSC numerator value 3 by 3 by 4.86, you get 0. Point something. So that we consider what MSC is numerator, MSC value denominator 4.86 by 3, you get 1.62 and also variance ratio is what? It should be greater than 1. Okay. So therefore, if MSC greater than MSC, what is step number A? And also we find degree of freedom for this. How to find degree of freedom? N minus C comma C minus 1, 7 comma 2. Okay. Uh, using statistical table, 
uh, with the help of degree of freedom 7 comma 2 you get 19.35 this is stable values okay so now we find a step number uh, 4 what is step number 4 we write a critical value at alpha equal to 5 percentage uh, level of significance of the degree of freedom 7 comma 2 is 19.35 this is stable value next is step number 5 step number 5 is nothing but conclusion how to write conclusion obtained value is strictly less than stable values okay what is obtained value obtained value is f equal to 1.62 it's strictly less than table value table value is 19.35 okay once it is strictly less than therefore we, uh, therefore one once it is strictly less than uh, therefore h naught is accepted h1 is rejected suppose you get strictly greater than one greater than means h naught is rejected h1 is accepted what is our uh, h naught h naught is null hypothesis we consider null hypothesis is what therefore there is no significant difference between the columns what is our column here column is nothing but yield that is treatment okay so once it is less than you consider h naught is accepted h1 is rejected once you get it greater than h naught is rejected h1 is accepted what is h1 h1 statement is there is significant difference between the column so from this problem we get h naught is accepted and h1 is rejected therefore we consider H naught statement. There is no significant difference between the call option. Okay. I hope you are enjoying this session. Thank you.